Hi everyone, uh, I'm Mahan. Welcome, glad to be here. Um, so a bit about me, I just finished high school and I'm going to study music at university, which might be somewhat of an unpopular choice in here. Uh, and but so essentially this project combines two of my big interests, music and programming, uh, which I have a long history with. And yeah, uh, is this better? Okay. Um, so essentially the aim of this project is to take uh, music software, which at the moment is basically just written in C and C++, and write it in Julia, because obviously the issue with C and C++ is it's a lot more difficult for beginners to write. Um, Julia being a high level language breaks down a lot of the barriers. Uh, the one issue that we have obviously is that there's a large frameworks in C and C++ for writing code like this. Uh, so this is really starting from scratch entirely. Uh, and because of that, the first thing we have to do is implement all of the like most basic things. Um, but then also, Julia is good at a lot of things that are unique to it, and from that we can leverage those methods and create something new. Uh, one important thing to note is this is not close to being production ready, but uh, hopefully in the future will be something quite interesting. Uh, so the first thing is to create oscillators. Uh, as all of you know, sine waves are the, compo the only components of all sounds, all waves. Uh, so a sine wave, you can't hear it, but there is a sine wave playing. Um, the problem with sine wave, as you can see, there's one line. It only has one frequency playing at this, that by definition, a sine wave is one frequency. So to increase our sonic palette, what we do is we take harmonics of the root fundamental, and so for a square wave, this is a square wave, it sounds like nothing. Um, if we take every odd harmonic, so first, th the fundamental third, uh, fifth, and so on, in a reciprocal pattern, you get a square shape. And uh, then for a sawtooth wave, uh, you get every harmonic in an inverse pattern. Uh, uh, so there's also another common shape, which is an inverse saw, which is essentially just a phase inversion of a sawtooth wave. So it doesn't need a specific oscillator for it. And the next thing that we can do, which is special to Julia, and not really so much other languages that you might create since with, uh, is that because Julia is so good at solving differential equations with MTK and DiffEQ, uh, we can solve nice models. This is the Fitzhugh-Naguma model, which I'm sure someone in here can explain much better than me, but uh, is used to model neurons and electrical signals in uh, circuits. And so we can use just differential equations as ways of creating synth shapes and uh, types of waves, which is quite interesting. And so the next thing is transformations to the waves. The first one, which is ADSR. So this, is, uh, this stands for attack, decay, sustain, and release. It's essentially simulating how acoustic instruments will create sounds. Um, when you play a note on a guitar, it won't immediately start at one volume and then stop instantly. It'll grow and decay, sustain, and release um, over some period of time. Compression, this isn't, uh, this is very basic compression, but essentially any sound, any value over a certain amplitude threshold gets scaled down by the ratio. Here is two. So uh, anything above that will just get clipped slightly. Um, clip distortion works similarly, but instead of scaling things down, it'll clip any values above it to a certain, to the threshold that it's checking for. So you can see there that the peaks are truncated to 0 0.8. Uh, so the next thing that we can do, um, which is common, 
is additive synthesis or polyphonic synthesis, which is essentially just where you take multiple oscillators and use them at the same time. Um, so here we would have a square wave, a sine wave, and a sawtooth wave playing it simultaneously. And And then here you can see like a quick implementation of this. So we create an instrument um, with ADSR values and its oscillators uh, and its compression. So this essentially creates a timbre that will um, then make sound um, and then playing a sequence of notes, uh, which is the super, ultra, hyper, mega, meta, Lydian scale. It's, it's a, that's the technical name, by the way. It's not a joke. Uh, and then, obviously, instead of a sequence of notes, you could play them at the same time, in theory, and make a chord. Uh, this would be two very nice chords, which I like, but you can't hear. Anyway, the next steps that we have here are, um, first of all, better API design. This is a very fresh project, so at the moment isn't the nicest to use. Um, so that is quite a big thing to improve. Um, phase manipulation we don't have yet. Uh, so that is something that we would need to add. More filters, uh, like reverb, delay, overdrive, EQ as well is very important. Um, Real-time generation, so something like playing notes on your keyboard and then hearing them immediately. Um, and also instrument modeling is something that uh, I was thinking about. Essentially, Julie is very good at differential equations, so modeling an acoustic instrument entirely and then like getting a differential equation for the amplitude of the wave that comes out. Uh, you would probably need better physics than I am capable of doing, unfortunately. In the future, you know, maybe once I've done some of my degree. Uh, this is where the current code base can be found. Uh, it is named after the Greek muse responsible for music. It is a utopia is the right way to pronounce it, I'm fairly sure. So we may be wrong. Any questions? Right. Um, uh, the question was, did we have any problems with the garbage collector while playing. Um, I don't think we did, no. Because uh, at the moment, we're not really playing anything long, and it's not like real time. So we give it a sequence of notes, like as a string, and then it plays it when we say play, but it's not really doing anything uh, very fast. Yes? Not at the moment, not at the moment, uh, yes. Uh, so the question was, do we have any way to structure pieces with um, nested collections? But we do not uh, have a way to do that at the moment. Yeah, yes, uh, in the far back. <laughs> yes, I will put them on the repository. Yeah. Uh, the question was, will you put the sound samples online? Yes, they will be on the repository. Uh, yes. So, um, in, uh, Chris Pino's talk the other day, um, he talked about um, using um, an AI model for, for, the, for the parts that are too hard to do the differential equations for. Um, that might be a way to go for an instrument model if you have enough sample data. Yeah, so uh, the question was um, using AI for modeling instruments. Um, yeah, I think that would be something I'd have to ask Chris about, definitely, because, again, beyond my understanding. But, yeah, that does sound like a possibility. Yes. Uh, 
the question was um, using Lily Pond code to generate music. Um, I haven't heard of it before now, but I have thought like uh, MIDI is the standard for sequencing, um, which is a plan on de generating like a sound wave within a synth from that. I think that would also. Right. Well, in that case, yeah, that would probably be the way to go. Uh, yes. Yeah, so the eventual plan, oh, yes, the question is, have you thought about uh, creating an interface between this and something like Pro Tools or Logic? So um, how, well, Pro Tools at least uses a wrapper called VSTs, I'm sure you've heard of. Um, the eventual plan is to create some, like a wrapper for VSTs in Julia, because at the moment it's kind of hard to do, not in C++, and yeah, so we would have to, wrap it in Julia first and then do that. That is a planned thing. Yeah. <laughs> 